You guys, I know this video is late and I'm sorry, but genuinely there was so much material to watch that I could not have gotten this done any faster than I did. Okay, let's jump into Chantel's week right away. Normally I would give you a long-winded preamble to start the video, but we simply do not have the time. This has been a very, very long week. There were 32 hours worth of material. So we are continuing the saga of Chantel and her uh, lovers, I guess we'll call them. Gentlemen callers, maybe if you want. Um, let's jump right into it, shall we? As always, as from before, we're going to be following the format of I'm only going to use a couple videos that I'm going to clip out and I'll throw in here. The rest of the time, it's just going to be me talking about what I thought of the rest of the week. It is far far too many videos for me to actually condense down clip and put together into this and if you guys want it in any kind of a timely basis unless you want like every video to be like one month video recaps and like one month late on top of that so you know we're gonna we're gonna try and do the best that we can here so i need to do my eye makeup well that's very good i won't be uh, tender loving anybody tonight i said sorry i'm gonna this is gonna bug me all night oh, tuck my armpits in so I said, why don't we just meet in my car for like, you know, in like a pub public area for like five minutes, you know, we'll wear masks. <laughs> oh, well, have a good Easter, Victoria. And everybody, I hope you're having a good Easter. I got to do my hair too, don't worry. So she starts off the, the week with this uh, get ready with me date. Uh, she's doing her makeup to go and meet with this guy named Nicholas in their car. She's gonna go meet up with him, say, hey, hi, hello. Uh, and you know, just kind of get a feel for him. And she, she's, once more, I would just like to remind everyone that she's doing this in the middle of a pandemic. She's gonna go into a small crowded car with a guy who she barely knows off the internet. And regardless of what they say, you don't know them personally, so you can't judge if they're like lying to you or not. And so she's just gonna take his word for whether or not he's actually careful about his life the rest of the time and potentially exposing herself and the people in her house, i.e. Pete's, to someone who could be infected with COVID. But she's gonna go meet him. Chantel's gonna Chantel and uh, to get just a feel of him. I mean, okay, I, I mean, I don't know, man. If this wasn't COVID times, I'd be like, all right, cool, as long as you're careful about it, it's in a well-lit area so that, you know, people can like keep an eye and make sure that you're safe. As long as you're doing all of that, I don't care, go for it. Given that it's COVID, I'm a little bit more hesitant to give her my seal of approval. You know, he doesn't live too, too far from me, so I'm just like, may as well meet him up and I'm like, we don't have to do, the, I'm like, we're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna talk and see if that sexual attraction is like in person because meeting somebody over the internet and then in real life is so different. She talks about how meeting with somebody online, talking to them online is very different from meeting them in person. And I would agree with that. I think there's a very big difference between like if say you and I were hanging out, right? Like if we are hanging out, I don't have the ability to go back through and cut the parts that are like awkward silence that are like me thinking about what I want to say of how I can sound clever. Maybe there's something else I want to add. I can't do any of that. So I might come across as being a little bit more dumber. I might also make a lot more like stupid edgy jokes, not like edgy in the way people now use edgy. But what I mean is like, I might make more like cringe worthy jokes, right? Because that's kind of the kind of person I am. I like cringy jokes. Um, but I might do stuff like that. When you meet with someone in person, you get to know what their personality is gonna be like on a day-to-day -day basis, which is, you know, it's fine. It's understandable. Um, so I get what she's talking about. She also, but she might wanna be careful though, because Chantel is no stranger to uh, fat fishing, which is a, a term that I recently learned. Um, basically, it's taking a picture at your like most attractive, thinnest angle. Um, and putting it out into the world. And even though the person can still see that, they're, that you're fat, they might not know the extent to which you are fat, right? Uh, I did not know that's what it was called. I just thought it was like a regular cat, catfish, but I guess because you're fat, it's a fat fish. Anyway, I like the play on words, but that's what she does a lot of times. She does that a lot with her Instagram. If you've taken a look at her pictures there, that's the kind of pictures that she posts up online. Even when she does that thing with her sweater where she pulls it all the way up here to cover her double chin, that's what she's essentially doing. She's fat fishing with like on video. So I don't know, it can go both ways. If you meet him, you might, he might not be as into you as well and you should be okay and learn to live with that. 
and of course I'm gonna let you guys know how it goes. I'll go live after. <laughs> I don't want to go live during because he doesn't know what I do. I'm like, oh, I'm just um, I'm I'm uh, I'm unemployed right now. So she says that she doesn't want to go live while she's with him, which would offer her some form of protection. I might just add because he doesn't quite know about what Chantel does for a living. Now, understandable, but. I I don't know. It's weird to me that she is willing to put so much information about, you know, her conversations with these guys and information about these guys out into the world when they have no idea that she's doing this. And I get that it's an anonymous, like they can keep it anonymous. She can change the names that people might not find out, but it's still like uncomfortable, especially if they happen to come across that information later on in life. It can make someone very uncomfortable that someone shared these personal details about you with the world. And so I don't, I don't know how my, how I feel about that necessarily, but then it is also her life. So she has some some, she has, she can share it to a certain extent, right? And I don't know where exactly I would draw that kind of a line. Another reason I think she hasn't shared this information with him other than it just not being any of his business right now so early in a relationship is I think that she is ashamed a little bit. Despite what Chantel says, says she is not as confident in her sexual prowess as one would think. And rightfully, I would assume if someone hears a story about you, you know, having violent diarrhea during a threesome or opening up your bra and launching a stale torpedo of Cheeto at your lover, like it might turn a person off. So I get why she's a little bit hesitant in sharing that information with him because I don't think she wants to be perceived. We have seen this with Chantel time and time again, where perception of others is a really big problem for her. She really doesn't like people looking at her as a whole. You know what I mean? Like physically as well, but also emotionally. She definitely likes to hide as much as she can. And I'm, I'm just like, so I'm just looking for somebody like to have hookups with. Like I want to have the same person, you know, because of COVID and like STDs and everything. <laughs> but I don't want a relationship. He's like, oh, I'm just looking for sexual only. So it just kind of gave me the vibe that he might think I'm like into him more than that. Like, buddy, don't worry, I'm not. Although maybe I was starting to. Maybe he could sense that, I don't know. All right, this is weird. You can't say that you want someone primarily for hookups and then like also be like, but then I want them to take me on dates and I want them to do this with me and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, then that's not a hookup anymore. That's a relationship. What you want is all of the good parts of a relationship. Like, I think that with a lot of things in Chantal's life, she wants the good without any of the actual bad, right? So she wants the parts of the relationship that are fun. So she wants the, the hooking up part. She wants the going on fun dates part. The, she wants the you know excitement that comes with being involved with a new person part. The parts that she doesn't want are the talking about long-term goals part, the financial planning part, the uh, dealing with each other's difficult family relations part, the you know being accountable of your time and your well-being to another human person. I can tell you that one of the reasons why I try and be healthier is because I want partner to know that I'm being healthier so it puts his mind at ease. He is a person who loves me. He is a person who wants me to do well. And because he's a person who loves me and wants me to do well, I am accountable to him for my time because I also am a person who loves him and I also want him to do well. My being unwell puts mental pressure on him. It makes him sad and unhappy and upset and it's the same with all of my other family members. And yeah, it's not my responsibility to make sure that they're like doing okay, but it is a privilege to have that many people love you. And it, I would want that. I would want people to love me, but there's also the downside of it where then, then you're accountable for that, right? She doesn't want any of those negative aspects. She wants all of the good parts of it. She wants all of the emotional bonding and then you can't see anybody else and you can't have this and you know, you have to give her all of your love and attention and caring and fun times and hooking up and all of that. But you cannot ask from her things which she does not want to give. And that's not how that works. Any relationship is a give and take, not just romantic relationships. Friendships are like that too. You have to give something of yourself to that person so that they can give you a little bit of something to you. You know what I mean? You have to build that repertoire with them. And I don't think she wants that. I think she just wants everything to be a one way street. That's why she's so like, she talks about when she loses the weight, but the middle part, the losing of the weight part, she doesn't ever want to discuss. She doesn't ever want to go into. She doesn't ever want to contemplate. Those are not the fun parts of it. And so Chantel doesn't care. She doesn't want all the aspects of anything. She just wants the good aspects of life. And 
I don't know what to tell you, dude. That's just not how, how it works. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Not like... You know, have any fun? This point, this really irritates me. No, you're not supposed to have any fun. It's the pandemic, no one's having fun. Go home and be miserable like everyone else. And I don't mean to, I don't mean to imply that you should go home and be like clinically depressed. I just mean that, no, you know, her idea of having fun is going out and, and like kissing random strangers, like exchanging saliva with random strangers during a deadly pandemic when she is a walking, talking high risk factor is incredibly annoying to me. It is like, honestly, I've gone to the point where I'm getting to be okay with it. And I understand people are going to look at my like, you know, Instagram and be like, hey, why are you hanging out? I would once more like to remind everyone I was in complete, total isolation style lockdown for like an entire year and then some. The only time I started hanging out with people was two weeks after I got my vaccine. That is the only time I started making plans with people. I did not hang out with people before that. I did not spend all my time with that. And even then, the people that I hang out with now are also people who are fully vaccinated. They're the only people that I have any kind of contact with. So no, the assertion that what anyone else is doing, what Chantel doing is the same is absolutely ridiculous. Canada right now is going through like a hot spot. They're having, not, not a hot spot, they're having a spike. And the fact that she's behaving so recklessly, and I get it, right? Like physical urgence can sometimes be really hard to deal with, especially when your hum hormones are as wonky as Chantel's are. But that is not an excuse for poor behavior. You are an adult and I fully believe you are capable of dealing with that on your own. So no, you're not supposed to have any fun. Suck it up. And I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it with Pete. Honestly, like it's just weird. I don't know. I'm sure he doesn't want to hear about my. I love these <laughs> with a nice red lipstick or something. And I was gonna wear jeans today. I haven't worn jeans. Like I just forget that I have jeans, but they do flatter the figure more than like you know. I don't know what I don't know how Pete feels. I don't want to assume anything. You know. Yeah, exactly, Amanda. I'm not gonna like just talk. It'd be like me like messaging BB, you know. And I guess that's like something I didn't realize. Like even though I'm like BFFs with Pete's, I can't really talk like I would with just like a BFF like about men you know like I just get the vibe that he doesn't want to hear it <laughs> so of course she doesn't feel comfortable talking to Pete's about this stuff and I don't think she should feel comfortable talking to Pete's about this stuff I mean it is not her responsibility to make sure that Pete doesn't have a crush on her because Pete is putting himself in this situation but fundamentally caring about not doing emotional damage to him it's just it's like a not asshole thing to do. So I'm appreciative of the fact that she is like trying to be a good like roommate to him and not discuss these things with him. But that doesn't mean that we should be the ones hearing this either. This is not the place where we should be involved. The, we, the audience, I mean. She should be talking about this with Reyna, with her sister, with potentially with her mom, but depends on how what kind of relationship you have with your mom. But definitely you have a sister and you have a friend, right? I'm sure she's mentioned that she has other friends. I don't understand why she can't call them and talk to them about it. Do you know how much stuff I call and I'd like bitch at my best friends about I do it all the time all day every day okay she can do the same call your friends we are not that next <sighs> now we're starting a slew of videos I gotta be honest with you guys there's some videos in here that I skipped all together and I might not even mention that I watched them because I have nothing to say on them they're just inane there's a lot of them this is the first one of them though which is where she actually goes on this tinder date she meets with this guy in the car she comes back uh, she comes back out she gets back in the car she immediately goes live her face is a little flushed they look like they've been kissing a little good on her I mean COVID aside, which is a big aside, uh, it's good. I want her to be happy with herself. I want her to have love in her life. Like that's a shitty thing to wish for someone to not have. So I'm glad that she's getting some. That being said, she gushes on and on and on about this man. It is no bueno. It is not good. She should not be getting this attached this fast to someone that she barely knows. Because the thing is, she's going to build this person up to be something in her head. And then when they don't meet all of those unrealistic, unasked for expectations, they're going to be a disappointment and she's going to blame it on him. 
she's not gonna internalize any of that, that, you know, I maybe was a little unrealistic. I maybe let my imagination get away from me. I did this. She's gonna be like, it's you, you disappointed me. And I think it's, this can only lead to bad places. Anyway, next, uh, next video, it's called Let's Hang. She's uh, once more, you know, just, Talking about this guy, she mentions briefly that she maybe should not have mentioned this to us, and I 100% believe that. I really wish that she had once more not mentioned any of this to us at all. We are not the right audience for this. She can tell us about the broad strokes of her love life, I think, but talking about it in detail, giving us details about how she wants to have his babies even though she doesn't have ovaries is like, crazy and she should keep all that crazy to herself not because i think that you shouldn't tell people about the insane thoughts that you have but because she's built an audience of mostly enablers and that can lead to nowhere healthy anyway next this is another live it's called hi and all she does is obsess about this guy that's it that's pretty much the entirety of it there's nothing really else of interest in that Next, she's eating pizza in this. It's one of several videos in which she's eating pizza in this week. So that's not really all that important. The part that I did think was kind of important, and she said something she's done several times before, where she'll talk about somebody that she's like, you know, that she found attractive or whatever, and she'll always have a very convenient celebrity that she can compare them to. So this person, Nicholas, she's comparing them to Machine Gun Kelly. Now, if you don't know who Machine Gun Kelly is, um, He's a musician and he's married to Megan Fox, which I think is interesting because Megan Fox is hot. Ooh, that is unattractive. Anyway, um, she is maybe projecting a little bit and I don't think she really sees people as individual people so much as what they can do for her, which is a little bit worrying. I think, uh, and that's why it's easy for her to just say, well, they look like this person. Like, I don't know who partner looks like. Partner just looks like partner. There's no one else that I could really look at him and be like, ah, I think he kind of looks like this celebrity. I don't have a convenient celebrity that I could compare him to. And I know a lot of brown celebrities, so it's not even just that. Um, I think she does it because she doesn't really get to know people on a very, like, on a deeper level. It's very superficial for her. And so if she says, well, he looks like Machine Gun Kelly, that's good enough for her. Because that's really all she's interested in. That's the level of depth that she really engages with when it comes to, honestly, most people. Anyway, next. Uh, the next video that I'm going to talk about is her plus size torrid pajama haul thing. Um, she has some pajama stuff in there. She didn't really try any of it on. I don't think it would have been appropriate to put on. YouTube anyway, so I'm fine that, you know, it's not on here and I'm not really going to talk about it because it doesn't like, I can just say that I think aesthetically everything she bought looks nice, but there's a huge difference between something looking nice and something looking nice on you, which is why sometimes I can see something on a model and I'll put it on myself and I'm like, why do I look like a half submerged hippo? Um, it's because I don't have the body type to pull that kind of an outfit off or I don't have the confidence. Generally, it's the second one. Either way, what I was trying to say is that part of the video is irrelevant to me. She does make a comment in here that I did kind of want to discuss. She talks about uh, COVID versus sex life and how there are certain exceptions made for people who live alone. She doesn't live alone, she lives with Pete's. Those exceptions are made for socially meeting people, not for having random hookups. And I understand that like meeting and hooking up are uh, biological impulses, but we are not a slave to our biological impulses. We are like evolved beings. So uh, not to sound too much like I'm starting my own personal cult though, when I do I'll let you guys know she definitely needs to understand that having intercourse with somebody right like even if you're wearing protection can still lead to you getting infected right like you're kissing this person you're in close proximity with this person you're touching this person and that skin on skin contact where they can pass bodily fluids onto you which is how COVID is transmitted just seems like so reckless behavior for someone in such precarious health. Even with her weight loss, she's in precarious health. Might I remind you, she has multiple lung embolisms. So it's like, she's like the highest risk category possible. Anyway, next. So there's a lot of massive videos now that I'm just not even gonna put a name to. She just she just has a little bit of a back and forth. You know, the guy isn't texting her back and the guy is like, she's mad about the fact that he isn't texting her as fast as she wants and blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot of food eating involved in the middle of that. There's a lot of bitching involved about like other guys as well that she's talking to. And fundamentally what it boils down to is that rather than engaging with multiple people on a platform like Tinder, she's put all of her hopes, she's pinned all of her hopes on this one guy. And now that he isn't reciprocating the way that she wants, 
want, which is not fast enough, not quick enough, not with enough enthusiasm, she's like, well, then what is even the point of this if he can't be everything that I'd imagined in my head for this person to be? He doesn't know that you're imagining all these things for him. You're being a little crazy and he doesn't know you're crazy. He doesn't have any read on your crazy. So he's not going to be able to satisfy you the way that you're mystery person in your head that you've built him up to be could, right? And when those when she sees the gap in between the two, she just gets very irrationally upset. I don't really know what to do about that other than see a therapist, but like I mean, I could scream that for 90% of what Chantal does and it would never change anything. I and this is a lot of time by the way that she spends online. And most of it she's sitting in one place or barely moving. Um and most of it is just her talking and eating. Uh, which is not all that different from last week and it it worries me a little bit as i talked about with like her getting blood clots and her being a little bit more prone to them because of her weight and her essentially just completely sedentary life but 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 there's a little bit of a ray of sunshine in this week she went on a walk and you know what i'm impressed she went for a 10 minute long walk. Now that for you and me might not be a lot, but for somebody like Chantal who is morbidly obese, who has issues, who cannot really walk all that much, I actually think it's great. This is one of two videos that she puts up where she walks. This is called I think just walking. Um and she does walk. She's getting exercise in. It's a nice day outside. She's walking up a hill. And you know what? She's building up her stamina. I am really glad. This is better content than most of what she's put out. I'm happy for her. I'm happy to sit there. I watched this on her channel. I watched it all the way through and I turned off my ad block because I'm like, you know what? If we can incentivize this enough, incentivize her going for walks enough, then maybe she'll do this primarily, you know? Anyway, next. So the next video that I want to discuss, not necessarily the next video, I don't remember, there were too many. It's called uh Guess Who Texted Back or something of that sort. And she's talking about the guy and he texted her back and he made some lame excuse about how he was really really busy and didn't actually have the chance and work was crazy and blah 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 and does she want to hang out Sunday. And this is I think the second time that he's rescheduled with her. and it's starting to feel a little bit like he's stringing her along the tiniest bit I, not necessarily right he could just be like genuinely just not all that into her and so he's like whatever you know I'll get to it. I'll get to it when I get to it and Chantal being Chantal is putting a lot of hopes on him and me watching this all from her perspective it's hard for even me to not look at it and say well that guy should at least have let her know but genuinely you know he's like he doesn't seem all that interested in her and she doesn't just seem to be getting the idea and she's still willing to give him another chance if someone blew me off once you better believe that like i i am the kind of person i would never text him back i'm like you can text me back and you can apologize and then i'll think about it but until then like no nah, i'm done son but i also don't do like i've never done like a tinder thing ever so i have no idea if like the uh the social behavior around that is different the expectations that are different i would assume so and i would assume someone who's been on tinder would actually know them unlike i who knows nothing about anything anyway next So, I think he blocked me because on WhatsApp there's no more profile picture. There's only one check mark and it doesn't show when he was online. So, obviously he blocked me on there. <laughs> so, I told him off on I pretty much like left him a voicemail and told him off. Well, I didn't like freak out on him. And then um All right. The next video we're going to talk about is the one that you posted that says he blocked me. <laughs> I'm not surprised that he blocked you if he has any kind of a radar for crazy. He might have picked up on the fact that you full on gone and fallen in love with the imaginary version of him that you've constructed in your head after meeting him for 5 minutes in your car via a app that you were using. primarily for hookups. Like if you put it into that series of events, it kind of does make you seem like like a little bit Glen Closey. That's all I'm saying. Just a little you're giving me like whiffs of Glen Close. That's all. And I messaged him on the dating app and was like, "I wish you would have just told me you weren't interested instead of stringing me along." And have a nice life. She says this thing where she's like, uh, you know, he strung me along. I'm I'm not sure that he did. He didn't express any more interest than in in you than would be considered normal. You constructed a, an idea of him in your head. You wanted him to lead you on. You wanted him to show you more interest. He never actually did that. He barely texted you and he canceled on you a few times. The version of you in your head that you had 
created about him, that guy led you on. And you, you can't blame your brain on him. That's not a him problem. That's a you problem. It's like, I like being single, though. I don't want to be in a relationship, but I don't want... It's like, what I want doesn't exist, basically. You know? Like, I just want, like, some benefits, some kind of relationship with somebody, but not the strings attached, asking me where I'm going, what I'm doing kind of thing. You know, like, I still want to be free, but... <laughs> yeah, I guess. I want a relationship, but no relationship. I don't know how to explain it. And once more, this brings me back to the whole, you either want a boyfriend or you want a casual hookup, right? You either want one or the other. This idea that you want all of the benefits of both of them, where you want the casual aspects of just the hooking up part, but you want all of the emotional commitment from him from the second part, but you don't want to give anything in exchange is... You're living in fantasy land. That's not how it works, and that's just not how it's going to happen. I'm sorry. You need to, like... Need, you need to understand more clearly, I guess, what each of these means and figure out what type of, of romantic attachment that you want and then go from there. I will tell you, I am not a casual hookup person. I am not a casual person, first of all. Uh, I don't, that's like not my game, right? I would rather have like only a few people in my life um, who I am like very close to than have like a bunch of people who I like rarely talk to, which is fine with me. That's just kind of how I roll. If you're not like that, that is totally okay, but then you need to figure out the kind of person that you are and then commit to that path because you aren't choosing right now and you're putting yourself out there and then you're getting disappointed when the person doesn't give you exactly what you want, but you don't know exactly what you want and you've never communicated that with anybody else. So, it's just a harsh reality that's just a bit hard to swallow, I guess. It didn't go straight to voicemail, no. He probably saw my number calling and was like, oh fuck, this girl's crazy. <laughs> I don't want to mess with crazy. I know like a lot of guys get turned off right away by women that are maybe more forward or more, you know. You weren't forward, Chantel. Being forward would mean meeting him in the car and being like, hey, you know, let me go down on you. That's being forward, right? Or hey, how about we go back to my place right now? Or hey, let's find a dark area so that we can, you know, do the, you know, that. Cool, that's forward. What you are talking about is like what you did was put a huge emotional investment into someone who you were not supposed to have formed an emotional investment to, who was, had no idea that you were forming an emotional investment to him and who did not consent to this kind of emotional investment. So like that's not being forward. There's a big difference between the two. I don't know, it would be hard going like a week. It would. It's hard to like, yeah, it's like I come on here and like share my life because People are interested in it. Thank you, Earth. So if that like all of a sudden just stopped, it would be so weird just like going back to being a nobody. Not a nobody. You know, everyone, like our lives are special. It's just that, you know, it would just be weird. Nobody caring about your life anymore or what you're doing. It's weird. All right, yes and no. Yes, we do actually want to know what's going on in your life, but no, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that you actually have to do all those things for you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you have to be like whatever to me, right? You don't have to do any of those things for us. Just because we want to hear about your personal life doesn't mean you have to give us that. Just like if you want to get off of YouTube, you shouldn't stay on YouTube because we want you on YouTube. None of that makes any sense. You got to do what's best for you ultimately at the end of the day. That you should always be your number one priority. But we want a secondary. But I think Chantel knows that. I think Chantel's fully aware of that. I think that this is an excuse for her to overshare and overindulge and just do whatever she wants while making it seem like she's doing it for other people. That's not what it is. I mean, you, everyone knows this and your audience, especially the ones that you interact with on a regular basis are sycophantic enough that you could do anything and they'd be like, yes, queen, you gotta do what's best for you. Yes, queen, self-care, right? So they're not going to care and we're haters, so it doesn't matter what we have to say. Screw us. So I don't know why you're still doing it. Which I don't blame somebody for not wanting to be with somebody who doesn't take care of themselves. It's not attractive. 
And I've discovered that, you know, like I don't think I would want to be with a man who's very, very, very unhealthy and very, very obese. And so I can understand that. This is something that I've noticed a lot of fat people do where they'll talk about how uh, they, you know, like fat women especially, um, well they talk about how they don't want to be with someone who is their size. They very much so judge men on their like physical appearance, but they don't want to be judged that way themselves. And I find this very hypocritical and I find this very off-putting, but I don't actually know how to like fix any of that. The idea that, um, you know, guys can and they should be like six feet tall and they should be buff and they should work out, but you can be slovenly and then they should accept you for who you are because body positivity and girl power is stupid and toxic. It's <laughs> the best way I can put it. It's stupid and toxic. You are not an exception. If they have to hold, if they have a certain standard that they should hold themselves to, then you should also have a standard that you hold yourself to. It's not like girl power means that all of a sudden you can be like, you can be as unhealthy as you want, but they cannot comment on that, they can't worry about that, they can't expect different from you, and more importantly, they just have to accept that for what it is, but they have to keep themselves in like peak perfection. That's what Chantal wants. She doesn't want to be with someone who's that unhealthy, and she says that she's okay with it, but then a lot of times, you know, she'll people will reject her because she's fat and she gets really mad at that. So obviously she's not as okay with it as you would think. But I'll be all right because I feel like, um, I feel really good about my progress about my goals and I'm not letting anything deter me from that and like I said next year I really 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 want to do this European trip and it's going to take a lot of planning and a lot of stamina building and yes oh, I would love to like can you move to Europe so the last thing in here in this video that I want to talk about is the fact that she mentions going to Europe. She's done it in several other videos this week as well. She talks about how she wants to take a Europe trip. Uh, fun fact, I went to Europe. I went for about six weeks. Um, I didn't, I wasn't like a backpacker in the traditional sense, so I did take all of my stuff in a backpack. Uh, and I went to a bunch of different countries. We started in uh, London and then we went to Scotland and we took the ferry across and went to uh, Holland, um, to Amsterdam. Uh, and we done we did that then we drove from Amsterdam to Luxembourg Belgium and then France but we just went to Paris and France we didn't really go anywhere else anyway it was a great trip it was a lot of fun there's a ton of things to do in Europe if she can go she should absolutely go what I will tell you though is that I walked more in Europe than I have ever walked in my entire life anywhere because driving in Europe is an absolute nightmare and getting cabs is actually really hard you can take public transportation which is what we did most of the time or especially when it comes to places like paris and amsterdam and london these are places you want to walk you can't get a feel of the city if you aren't walking you can't experience those places without really like doing it by foot i was tired every single day of the week that i was there and i weigh significantly less than her right she needs to really get the weight off if she wants to enjoy these places the way that I think she thinks that she will enjoy them. They can't really be done if you're not very mobile, unfortunately. And a lot of these people are built in like old timey, like even their roads and stuff aren't really meant for stuff like wheelchairs and whatnot. They've done, they've made great strides in making them a lot more accessible to people who are disabled and who need like walkers and whatnot. But like, there were parts in London where if I had even a tiny bit of heel because they had those cobblestones, it was like impossible to walk on. I'm just saying, think about that, okay? Don't like put money down and waste a bunch of money on a trip that you think will happen because you will have lost that weight and instead focus on first losing the weight and then rewarding yourself with a trip should you get to the weight that you want. Anyway, next. I don't want a sugar daddy. No thanks. I'm not that desperate for money. <laughs> First thing she says in this video is that she's not that desperate for money. Girl, you've done a lot worse than be a sugar baby. I don't believe in judging anybody, especially when it comes to like the more sex work, sex work aspects of it. And you have lost the ability to criticize other people for what you are and are not doing for money. When you yourself put yourself onto a website and advertise what is essentially softcore porn, right? For 
feeders, essentially, right? And there's nothing wrong with it. I don't care, but don't be a hypocrite about it. Don't judge other people for what they're choosing to do, how they're choosing to make their money, when you were perfectly okay going to this sort of site and making this kind of content. Why is it okay for you, but not okay for other people? Just make it make sense, that's all I'm saying. I went up the hill, here. I went up the hill, then I walked all the way, all the way around, here, and back here. Without my walker, and not much back pain, a little bit. So she walks a bunch and her back doesn't hurt that bad. I'm actually really glad to hear that. Yay! She's building up her stamina. This is what should happen. If she keeps doing these walks, man, she'll be able to do much longer. She'll be able to go for much farther. And you know what? Maybe that Europe trip won't be so far away. I'm really happy for her and I hope she keeps this up genuinely. Yeah, I think I just, like, that's like, I don't cry much. I just kind of bottle it all up and just keep going and moving. Just keep going. I can't, I hate staying like dwelling on something for too long because it's just like to me I just feel like it's things like life keeps going on no matter what happens to you you know and I just feel like sometimes to just pause and like reflect on everything that's happened like even my therapist was like you've been through so you've been through a lot in the past like year year and a half and have you even processed any of it and I was like probably not <laughs> when does Chantel not dwell on things I really want to know this like how where did she get to this point where she's like oh I don't dwell on things girl you met him for 15 minutes and you made like a bajillion videos like extolling his virtues to all of us what since when do you not dwell on things uh putting away two thousand dollars a month uh to for her Europe trip is not a bad idea I don't remember how much it costs for us but we also are have like different priorities so for us the priority was we wanted to do all of the things and we want to eat all the foods we're not particularly interested in like having super fancy hotels or having like the nicest like stuff like that like I don't care about hotels all that much I'm perfectly okay like flying economy and all that junk Chantal might have other expenses so her uh, her price might be a lot higher so I don't really know I don't know if my experiences are applicable at this point and I think I went like four years ago I don't remember my memory is very bad but I went some years ago and I remember that that the, the ticket prices then had been a little bit depressed because this was right after the um, attacks that had happened in Paris and so flights to Europe were significantly cheaper and we'd already planned the whole trip we just hadn't bought our tickets and we sort of lucked out and our ticket prices were really really good I actually think the airlines that we flew from shut down too we flew like Wow Airlines through Iceland and I think that entire airlines has shut down now so huh, interesting anyway that was just an aside next this is the last video that I'm gonna talk about I'm sure that there's already 14 more videos by the time I'm gonna done recording and uploading mine but it is what it is and I can't do anything else the only things that I have to say for this last video which is uh, just her cooking video is first her kitchen is absolutely filthy it is absolutely filthy she needs to clean her kitchen more and she needs to do it on a more regular basis this is gross don't live your life like this um, and secondarily is she's making these like chicken legs and she puts like seven or eight glugs of oil in there there's so much oil and these are like drumsticks that are already dark meat so they already have more fat in them and they've got their skin on them which already has more fat with them you want to actually put less oil in something that has that much already fat on in it especially when it's got like chicken when it's got the skin on because you want the fat to render out from the skin and you want it to get nice and crispy if you put a bunch of oil on there it's essentially going to like uh, poach a little bit in oil right so like don't don't do that and that sounds so heavy and greasy uh, just she put so much oil in there uh. the last thing that she says in here is that she just doesn't feel like cleaning she hates cleaning all right thank you thank you for being honest thank you for not making excuses thank you for not saying oh yeah you know uh, I'm just really overwhelmed you know I'm not really feeling it I've had some mental health concerns and blah 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 because even when those things aren't happening your house is always gross because you don't like cleaning that is okay not everyone likes cleaning you should you should still clean but at least admit that to yourself because she likes to talk about how much she actually is like a very clean person and now you know when her mental health spirals that's when her house gets messy but her house is always gross her house is always gross because she is always just kind of a gross person it's not everyone's strong suit I can tell you I am anal retentive when it comes to putting things up but I'm like a very big pain in the butt I don't like things being messy when there's too much clutter I get massive hardcore anxiety partner is not like that partner stuff is 
all over the house. And I love him anyway, but his stuff is all over the house. And that's okay. He's accepted who he is as a person. He tries, you know, to clean up for me. I try and be a little bit more lenient about his stuff. And you just have to admit who you are and then find ways to work around that. It's not just being like, well, I don't feel like doing this, though, so therefore I'm never going to do it. And I'll make excuses so people don't know why I don't want to do it, which is just that I don't like doing it and I'm lazy. <sighs> I've been talking for what feels like 47 hours. I It took me more than 24 hour cycle to actually get through all of our videos. This week was hard, you guys. <sighs> uh, this week was super hard. Anyway. Please give me a thumbs up on this video. Please leave me a comment and boost this video. Uh, you don't have to. Normally, I don't ask this many times, but like legitimately, this was really hard. I wasted so many hours watching your video so you didn't have to. Reward me. Uh, I'm joking though. If you guys like this video, you can give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give me a thumbs down. As always, don't feel obligated. Uh, leave me a comment down below if there's something you'd like me to really, really know. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Hit the notification bell down below and hit all if you want to know when I upload any videos right away. I've got all my social medias linked down below. I've got Instagram where I've got food stuff and life stuff and I should be traveling a little bit more soon so there's more stuff coming. I've got Twitter where I'm a little toxic and a little bit petty. But hey, I'm also kind of entertaining and fun fact, that's the easiest place to interact with me. And I've got Patreon. Think of Patreon as the tip jar for the internet. So if you like the job that I'm doing here and you would like me to continue, hey, consider tossing a few coins in my direction. You don't have to, it's not necessary. But I'd appreciate it if you did and it genuinely does help me out. As always, I'm Jasmine the sequel. And I am not relatable. Peace. A special thanks to my patrons, Acrophobe Christina, Courtney EP, Gigi Wee, Wild Rose, Jam Beans, Jay Thomas, Lauren Chris, Michael B. Petty, That British Unicorn, Sky Andropolis, Sonia P., Xanthal, Debbie Elliott, D. Higgins, Juliet Q., and Kate O.